Well, I'm showing three films, and I think one of the reasons why I've chosen these three video installation films, which in a way both exist also as free screen works, is first of all to show the relationship between cinema and gallery films, because I make both films and usually in the same series, making multiple screen works and single screen works. And I do that because I like the idea of works being shown to different audiences. And also Baltimore, the first work, when it was released in 2003, you had a number of science fiction films which were being released at the same time. And of course, we had Baltimore as a city which um, has a very kind of important series that has been shot in that city. And I think that series and the way that I was signifying on Baltimore itself was something that was of interest in connecting these two aspects between popular culture and the actual city itself. I think in this work I was very much trying to bring these two different worlds together by looking at the different museums, the Waters Art Gallery and the Great Blacks in Wax Museum. And the Great Blacks in Wax Museum is in a way quite amusing in the sense that it's not the perfect wax museum. It's a museum where we have the mixture of memorabilia and the memorialization of black culture. But in an odd sort of way, the Waters Art Gallery, which has an amazing Renaissance gallery and collection and is really looking at art from over the world over the last you know, 500 years and more, and it was also, it's also about memorialization, and so there's a way in which bringing these two museums together in that work, and then having the cyborg character played by Vanessa Myrie, who features in the other two works we're also going to be showing, there's a kind of way in which her character at least has this trance textual quality. And when I was teaching in the States, um, between 98 to 2002, I began to question, in a way, how could I teach certain questions around cinema that might be antithetical to my own work. And so I think that also was one of the prime reasons of rethinking around the black exploitation genre and its kind of success and legacy. Um, a legacy that went into hip-hop and other musical forms. And of course, I think someone looking at Baltimore would be right to look at the character played by Vanessa Myrie, someone who is an amalgamation of a character like Pam Greer, but also there's references to her being a cyborg, and that came and developed from reading the novels of Octavia Butler. Because at that particular time when I made the work, there's also an interest in Afrofuturism in cultural study circles in the States. And there was a way in which I was very interested in trying to visualize that. In a sense, what started off as a kind of project which was really thinking about a work or genre that was antithetical to my own practice, because I disliked black exploitation films quite a lot, actually even though I went to see them when I was very young, there's a way in which I kind of learned to see and read them in a kind of different way, I think. And so that was a very interesting kind of journey in terms of making that work and then making a work like Baltimore, which really grew out of all of that research. True North it's a work which is very much, first of all, about the, the Arctic sublime. It's a retracing of Matthew Henson, who was an African-American explorer who went to the North Pole, apparently, with Robert E. Perry in 1909. And the narration derives from an interview which was conducted in 1953 by Robert H. Fowler, who was a student at Columbia. He interviewed Matthew Henson about two years before he died, where he talks about a kind of argument between himself and Robert E. Perry. He was, of course, attributed the actual kind of... Well, he got to the North Pole and he was part of the whole history 
um, of polar expeditions. And Matthew Henson, of course, was left aside and um, died penniless, more or less. He wanted me to stop. He wanted me to stop before I got to the pole. In a way, in this work, what I wanted to do was to rememorialize this kind of narrative that was explicated in the interview by casting it in a new voice and casting it in a debate around the, the notion of polar expeditions and masculinity and gender. In a work like The Leopard, I was very interested in trying to meditate on Visconti's Leopard and to think about what would a modern expression be of trying to represent journeys from across the Mediterranean, from North Africa to places like Lampedusa. How could one sort of meditate on the leopard through dance? Because, of course, the very famous Borum sequence in Leopard is something of a certain significance in that film in terms of what it's representing in the conversation between the demise of the Sicilian aristocratic classes and the new unification of Italy from north to south. And so for me, I was really thinking about dance as a way of trying to perform a metaphor for this newness of another debate that's been taking place in an Italian context. I was very interested in trying to work with Russell Malafant in this work and to use dance in this way as an expression, um, a way where choreography can remap the journeys into the spaces, um, literally um, in Sicily, but at the same time try to open up some other questions that might not be there if you did them in a kind of more normative, um, classical sense. Well, I think when I'm making works that the question of choreography is very important. It's very important in terms of thinking about the use of parallel montage across space when you're editing. And there's a way in which the question of the mise-en-scene, of the way in which images are being choreographed across the space and the way that montage and the structural and rhythmic aspects of that are translated into the narration become part of the expression of the language. Therefore, the questions around aesthetics and forms come back to haunt the current moment, I think. And I think the challenge is, is how can we make works which can communicate or connect to certain questions, at the same time resist the ways in which those questions are posed in more traditional political paradigms.